Now, just a, a tiny, tiny little note before we get stuck into actually solving this. I'm calling these, emphasis on I, I'm calling these indeterminate partial sums. This is not a, um, this is not like a proper term, not like the way partial sums is a proper term. Um, the reason I'm calling it indeterminate is because the answer for this will change based on what n is, right? And I guess I could have used the word variable. Um, the point is, this is a partial sum, right? Can you see it's finite? I, I want some part of it, right? But the length of this partial sum can change, okay? If I pick n equals 3 or 4 or 5 or 500, the length of the sum will change, the value of the sum will change. So there is something about it which can change. It's, it's not determinate in other ways. Uh, and indeterminate is a word that's used in mathematics in a variety of ways, but it always means something like this, okay? It's like we're not sure, but we can still work with it, okay? So I'm going to show you not one, not two, but three ways to solve this question, okay? Um, and the three ways are all about trying to tackle it from different angles based on the kinds of stuff that you know, right? So, being that it's a partial sum, okay, what do we know about the total value of a partial sum? We have a, um, we have a formula for these things, right? What's the formula? <coughs> S sub n. A, a R of n minus one. Okay, now just pause for a second. Um, I can either write R the n minus one, or I can write one minus, one minus r to the m. Now, I'm just going to spoil it slightly and kind of allude to the fact that in this particular case, writing it this r. way is going to be more useful to me. Right? And you'll discover that pretty rapidly. Okay. So, if this is what I know, right, this is kind of like we, we spent time to develop this formula, so we might as well use it, right? Let's see how I'm going to put it together with this. Now, I'm going to make a tiny little note. You can see I've got two um, example questions on the board. That one I'm not really going to spend time doing. I just want you to have a go at it on the basis of the tools that we develop here. I prefer to write the question like that. There's only a very, very subtle difference between that one and this one, namely my choice of variable, okay? Um, or choice of program rule, I should say, right? I prefer to use k's up here rather than n's. Can anyone suggest to me why, you know, not that you have to, but why this might be a good idea? Okay, good. This N, this N, mark this very carefully. This N is completely different from this N and this N, right? Let's just forget that this series exists for a second. What does N mean in this formula? What does it mean? Number of terms. Number of terms. How many formula assignment terms are in this series, this partial sum, right? So this is the sum of the first N terms. But there are not n terms of this. In fact, part of the challenge of this question is how many terms are there, right? I am going to stick with the n pronumeral because this is what the question is handed me. It's an HSC question, if I remember correctly, okay? Um, so I'm going to just go with it. But in future, if you get a choice, I prefer to do it this way so I don't have two variables that have the same name, which is just recipe for confusion, okay? All right, so I'm going to try and use this thing on this. There are some easy parts to it, and like I alluded to, there are some hard parts. So first, let's do the easy parts. What's the first term? 3 to the n. 3 to the n. That's not too complicated. Just read it off. The ratio is a little bit harder, but not that much. What is taking me from one term to the next? Minus 3. Yeah, it's negative 3, OK? Um, you know it's a 3, firstly, because you can see these powers rising, which means I'm getting an extra 3 every time. And you know it's negative because of this alternating sign business. Okay, so far so good. Now, rather than write n equals, okay, I've talked about this before because I'm gonna if I write n equals, I'm gonna have like n equals something which has to do with n which isn't equal to n. I'm gonna say how many terms. Now, rather than just give you the answer, I want to unpack for you how I think about this kind of question, which will guide you through when it looks a bit different. Okay, how many terms? Well. I think about this first by looking at this guy over here, 3m, right? This is kind of like my, my last index, okay? Now, this question is hard, but an easier question, which I could compare this to, is if I started at 3 to the power of 1, right, 3 to the power of 1, if that was my first term, if 3 to the 1 were the first term, And it's worth thinking of this as an analog because it usually is something to the power of 1. Usually is the first term. Then how many terms would there be in total? There'd be 3 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up, and it would finish on 3n, right? So if I had that whole series, 
How many terms are there? There would be one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to three m, right? There would be three m terms. Does that make sense? So if three m were the first term, there would be three m terms. Okay, so that's what would be the case in, in like a simple kind of situation. But that's not the situation, right? I'm missing a whole bunch of terms off the beginning of here because 3 to 1 is in fact not my first term. Okay, how many terms am I missing? But I am missing. Now, what are the actual terms I'm missing? The ones I began with 3 to the 1, 3 squared, 3 cubed, dot, dot, dot. Now, what's the last term that gets dropped off to get the series that I actually want? What is the immediately preceding term right here? It'd be 3 to the n minus 1, right? Do you see that? Because then the next one, because I'm just going up by 1 each time, then the next one will be 3 to the n, the one that I actually start with, right? So therefore, the last term that I'm inverted commas missing is 3 to the power of n minus 1. Okay, in other words, um, that's n minus 1 terms. That's how many I've sliced off. Are you okay with that? So, therefore, how many terms do I actually have, right? Well, it would have been 3n if I'd started at 1. 3n. But it doesn't start from 1. I'm missing a whole bunch of terms. How many? That many, right? So it's going to be 3n, and I'm going to take away the number of missing terms. n minus 1. Are you okay with that? Do you see how I'm trying to unpack this? So, therefore, there are 3n take away n, which is 2n. Watch the double negative plus one terms. Are you happy with that? Do you see how I unpacked it? Okay. I guess another way of thinking about it is, I'm, I'm just trying to avoid this off by one error, which is so easy to have. When you think, oh, it ends on 3n, and it starts at n, an easy common mistake to make is go 3n, take away n, that just gives you 2n. Like, half the people who get this wrong will make that single mistake. This shows you that there's an extra term that you've missed, right? Namely, the n on the front. Okay. Any questions on that before I move on? Yeah. So I'm not quite sure how you get n minus one terms. This one here. Sure. So let's. The way I get this is to go back to this. Like, why did I introduce what I'm missing? Well, I thought about it in terms of a simpler series, right? One that starts at an obvious point and ends at an obvious point. Okay. So if I start at one, for instance, and end at ten then I know there's one, two, three, four. I don't have to count all the numbers in there. I know there's going to be 10 terms, okay? So if I started at one and ended at 3n, I don't need to count. I just say, well, there's 3n terms. That's what might be the case. But it's not the case. I'm, I didn't start at one. I started at n, okay? So I was trying to answer the question of, well, how much has been taken off the front? How much do I need to remove so I get the actual series I've got? And this is the number of terms that I'm missing from the front, right? Uh, one, two, three, all the way up to n minus one, because that would be one before this term, right? n minus one, and then n minus two, all the way down to one, okay? So if I know the last term in this series is n minus one, I don't need to count. Again, it's just like one to 10, except the 10 is not 10, it's n minus one. So if it's 1 all the way up to n minus 1, that's how many terms I've got. Just that number on the end. All right? Thank you. Great. Yeah, question. Um, so instead of doing that, you know how when we did like um, sum from 1 to 10, you said that um, this 1 minus this 1 plus 1. Yep. So can we just do 3n minus, like, the fields? That was my question. And yep. yep. So you're thinking 3n. N take away n and plus then just add one, one. Yeah. yeah yeah you absolutely can you absolutely can now there's a reason why i haven't done that okay and the reason why is because in a different scenario you don't add one you take away one so in or you one, add two or you take away two that approach of just saying oh, i'll just add one will only work in this exact scenario and if i give you a slightly different one it will not. So it won't work okay. uh, It might work for this one, but for a different reason. Okay. You see, like I said, it'll work, yeah. but for a different reason, which I think is exactly what you must avoid doing. Okay. Don't remember a process that happens to magically work. It's like, but why does it work? I'll, I'll tell you really quickly now. The reason why it works here 
is for this. Mm -hmm. right? The reason why you add one over here is because, do you notice, I start at a positive number k, and I'm actually climbing down here, right? I'm going down k minus 2, k minus, sorry, k minus 1, k minus 2, etc. down through to minus 2k. Mm -hmm. The reason why I add one here is because of this. The reason I add one here is because there's a zero term. Uh, 3 to the 0. Do you see to go from positive to negative? I've got to pass through 0. Yeah. So there's a 3 to the 0 term in the middle oh, there. So you now you see you add 1, but for completely different reasons. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's a really bad, like, oh yeah, I'll just add 1, but why? Like, that's the understanding that I'm missing. Okay? okay. Yeah, Tom. Um, would this all work if n was negative or k was negative? Ah, now I'm glad you asked that. And I think I'm going to let you have a go at this when you have a look at, well, what actually takes place when I pop in negative numbers? What does that mean? For the is it still meaningful, is the question. Okay? That's a question best answered for each particular one, which for now we don't need to worry about. Because as you can see, I'm transitioning up from n all the way to 3n. I stay in the positives all the way. Okay? Right, those are good questions. Anyone want to ask anything else before we march on? Why do we okay, why do last we one? The, uh, why do we use the um, series the hypothetical series that we missed before to calculate the um, number Why of did I even think about something yeah. that's not there? <laughs> yeah, sure, absolutely. Every time you look at something, like I'm what I'm trying to tackle is what most people do straight away, which is just 3n take away m. It's, it's not that uncommon a way to think about it because I'm, I've got an endpoint, but my, my beginning point has changed. I'm so used to starting at one, right, that I'll just, well, I'll just take away whatever's there, okay? I want to I want to hop on to the fact that that's actually a useful way to think. It's good to know that if you start at one and end and, and increment up one at a time and end at some arbitrary number, then that's the number of terms you've got. I don't want to lose that intuition that you've got, but I want to modify it because well I don't start at one. Okay, so that's why I think that's a useful way to think about it because you'll get it right. You'll get it right. Okay. 